Why is there an orange? What, what is the orange for? Me. It's a snack. Oh. Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange, you glad I don't know how to hypnotize you? <laughs> I'm Roll not the opening. <laughs> Roll the opening. It, what does it do? Hello! Welcome back to What's the Safe Word? I'm Am. I'm Mr. Christopher. And today, we you're getting are getting very, very sleepy. Very, very in your head. Soothing background music, snaps, clicks, even swaying pocket watches, erotic hypnosis, hypnotherapy, or just trance is a way in which you can experience sexual pleasure with just your mind. Today we're going to be focusing specifically on erotic hypnosis because I feel like it's something that's popping off, as the kids say currently, and it's a trope that we see in so many cartoons, movies, and media, where there's a hypnotist that's, you know, doing evil mind control to the superhero. You see it in Batman, you see it in literally every comic book or Saturday morning cartoon. There was some sort of trope around hypnosis or mind control or just transforming someone's mind into like clucking like a chicken, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> that was a chicken. <laughs> was it? And while we don't want to trigger anyone in the audience, we did ask you guys on the internet for all of your hypno, erotic, hypno, and trance related questions. Explosion! <laughs> Where we asked you guys for erotic questions and queries and asked you if you were getting very sleepy. It makes you very, very sleepy when my get on my Helix mattress. <laughs> today's episode is not only asking you if you're getting very sleepy, but it's also thanking today's Helix Sleep sponsor for making sure we can get real sleepy. But only when you snap your fingers. <laughs> We also have a reference and a very uh, experienced hypnotist in the city who shall remain nameless and knows their way around a good spiral or two. The first question today comes from Beanie Baby Fern who asks, what got you into hypnosis? You. <laughs> well, I think we should start by talking about like, yeah, I'm a really huge advocate and also explorer in the erotic hypno realm because during COVID, I really got into it because it was an easy way to still practice kink and do sexy fun things with people, but you can do that online from pretty much anywhere in the world. But didn't you also also get drawn to it because it allows you to turn your mind off and you are constantly like producing this show and editing and da 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 and you couldn't sleep well so you needed someone to make you relax. <laughs> Yeah, essentially that's why I was interested in it. There was a lot of artwork and there's tropes and everything that we watch and see that sometimes are a little sexy in how humiliating or degrading or even transformative they can be. See, and I can get into that. And that's why you were also into it as well. But although at first when I was explaining why I enjoyed Hypno, you're like, oh, it sounds exhausting. It sounds exhausting. It sounds the first few times I did it, I did it with a hypnotist that I swear to God for like an hour kept telling me I was relaxed, <laughs> which was not making me relax. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get to it? When's the sexy time? I am relaxed already. I am relaxed. <laughs> and the history of hypno does rely on relaxing, but it's also been used to mesmerize. And actually the term mesmerize or mesmer comes from Franz Antoine Mesmer, who in the late 18th century started using this kind of guided meditative style to mesmerize people. And there were actually clinical cases that he helped to prevent or cure people of some tics. And one of Mesmer's notable followers, James Braid, started talking about hypnosis and coined the term in the 18th century to talk about deep sleep and trying to help people focus and get nicely you know, relaxed. And since then, we of course have gone through the, the paces a bunch, but there are now entire like classes that you can take as well as different styles and skills in the hypnosis realm. And I, I found it online on a site called Hypnosis for Guys, which was kind of like the fet life, but for hypno. And then I started getting into it when the physicality was introduced to me. So it was less just mind talking. The tist I used used bondage and rocking me back and forth. And I liked that combination. And so everyone kind of gets into it a little bit differently. Next question. Funny Mail Rambo asks, does it actually work or is it kind of just like a funny role play? A lot of people come to Hypno, daddy included at first, very skeptical that it works at all. And while it is a guided meditation, you're being given suggestions. So it is a suggestible state that you can get into. Yeah, the first time I did it, I was so skeptical that I didn't turn my brain off. Um, I was aware of everything they were doing and saying, and I'd rock back and forth pretending to be in trance, but I wasn't really, because 
I was just too hyper aware of what was going on in the room. Because your brain is a muscle, and that's why when we talk about hypno, we have to be very, very, very clear that like this is not entry level kink. This isn't just a oh a little hypno file that I found online or on YouTube. I'm gonna watch that and it'll just be silly. No, your brain is a muscle, but it's also a very delicate thing that you need to be very careful about. So when vetting people, and we'll get into that, it's super important to do. But also to understand that susceptibility, while very different for everyone, is something that you can get into. And our references for this episode say that pretty much anyone can be hypnotized. It's really just a matter of enough training, getting that muscle, your brain working, and just being open enough to it. There's only like an estimated five to 10% of people that can't be hypnotized whatsoever, but there's still that 80% of people that can. And of that 80, like 10% are super highly susceptible people, which, you know, it's a very light, like it's a nice skill to have, you know? <laughs> that doesn't mean you're just dumb. <laughs> no, but I can get dumb. Next question. The next question comes from T Beast, who asks, can you describe how it feels to be hypnotized? I'd say, how does it feel to go under, but then I trigger this earworm, and then they have a they have a little uh, evanescence. Kind of? Can you say the band name Evanescence? No, we're not doing this again. <laughs> While it doesn't feel like an Evanescence song, you know that feeling when you wake up the first time? Wake me up! Then you go back to sleep for five minutes. Can't wake up! And then you wake up again even more tired. Save me! Hypnosis is kind of like that. You're being put in this altered kind of sleepy headspace, but then being brought up and then back down again. And that's where you start getting this cycle that kind of feeds itself that, that gets you even more and more comfortable every time. For me, because I am I have BDSM experience, it's like putting a heavy padded hood that I can't see or hear, uh, except for the voice that is talking to me. Yeah. It kind of muffles or softens everything around you, except what you're supposed to focus on or what you're being told to do or be suggested to follow into that story. But as daddy's kind of going into, like everyone's a little bit different. He's really physical when it comes to the hip no, he likes to be manhandled along with the sensations, where I like to just kind of be able to just lay back and relax. And everybody's different because Helix knows that. <laughs> <laughs> is that part of their ad read? <laughs> no, well, while Helix does not want to hypnotize y'all to trying them out, if you need a really good night's sleep, you might need to just hypnotize yourself, which is actually possible. You can hypnotize yourself. Helix mattress. Oh yeah, give me, okay. Helix sleep. Everybody's Helix different. Sleep. Try the Helix sleeping Helix. quiz. And Helix makes it easy for you to find the mattress for you using their Helix sleep quiz. For you, yourself, or you and a partner. Now again, you can do for one sleeper or two, enter in their names, their heights, their weights, as well as sleeping positions. So me and daddy might have different kinds of sleep positions, maybe even firmness preferences. And if you happen to be like us who are we're a little older, we do have body aches and pains that we can also specify. Lord knows my knees will never be the same since COVID. And as you might've seen on TikTok, there are certain brands out there that do have fiberglass in their mattresses. Helix mattresses do not contain fiberglass, which can be harmful to your health. But we ended up with a what, Daddy? A Dusk Lux. And Daddy, how are you enjoying it? I love my Dusk Lux. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Dusk, dusk Lux. Dusk, dusk, dusk Lux. Oh, dusk Lux. Yeah. And since getting our mattresses, I've actually never had sleep that was this good. I had an old mattress that had some springs in it. And because Helix has springs and this lovely like cushioning sensation, they're not only the best mattress for sex, but they're just the best mattress to get a good night's sleep. And before I got this mattress, I had my other mattress for over 10 years. Plus, Helix not only ships to you very, what, Daddy? Quickly. Got some scissors or something? Oh it. my God. I got, it. I got it, I got it. And when you're ready to really let it inflate. Do not try this at home. What do you do, Daddy? Ooh, it's the opposite of a vacuum rack. It goes, ready? <laughs> <laughs> it's eating me. If you've ever bought a mattress, there is that nagging sensation of like, ooh, is this the right mattress for me? I don't know if I like this. So we especially like that they have what, Daddy? A hundred night sleep trial. So over three months for free that you get to try it out. And don't forget, Felix has a 10 year warranty. And they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans. So you go to Helix Sleep today and use offer code WAT and you'll get 20% off your own Helix mattress and two free pillows on us. The next question from Raquala says, all glory to the Hypnotoad. Yes, all glory to the Hypnotoad. Do you never watch Futurama? No. No. Oh. Mm, no. That was like the Sim Simpsons spinoff, right? Yes. Yeah. Wait, what was the question? 
something about a toad, a hairy toad. Anyways, uh, next question from XX Bear Cub who asks, how deeply can someone actually fall into hypnosis? How long does it typically last? Wait, are you hypnotizing us right now? <laughs> no on the last part, maybe. But every hypnotizing session, it kind of depends. There's some stage hypnotists who will do shows where they're, as they're kind of, you know, hyping up the crowd, they can tell people's susceptibility by how they're reacting to some of their small cues. Mm -hmm. And then it's immediately like a handshake and they're out. Whereas other people, myself included, like a little bit longer, soothing kind of talking down or stair-stepping down into a nice, suggestible, meditative state. But how long would you say a, a session usually lasts for you? About an hour, I would say. Other than that, I, I get bored. <laughs> I would say around it, like a 30 minute to an hour and a half can be a general session if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one with someone. Some people do it for like getting better in the gym. I really like hypnosis tapes that kind of motivate you to, to do better in the gym. Big himbo. Yeah, those fitness yeah. himbos really yeah. love to be hypnotized into being working out, bro. Yeah. Imagine just someone just uh, snap as they're working out. <laughs> you throw your legs. <laughs> Make sure if you're doing hypno, you are being very careful about the time, the place, you give yourself that time to do it. Only do it with someone you vetted, you trust, and that you're going to be okay being very intimate with. But the other part of that question, how deep can somebody get incredibly like unresponsive to really light and just kind of like, uh. And there's usually four different levels to a hypnosis session. The first, of course, is going to be the induction. Do you know what the induction is? It's when you're introduced. Yeah, it's where you begin to relax. It's where you get kind of comfy. You sit down and you might have maybe a handshake or you might be a, you're now visualizing steps that you go down. And I think that was the problem with my first try was my induction took an hour. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so I got bored. <laughs> After the induction is usually the deepener and that's where you're getting very sleepy. Yes. You might be brought back up but then put right back down again. And that usually leads to an even deeper state if someone's really focused. After that come the suggestion parts of a scene where people are given suggestions or triggers or little, you know, snaps. Where you're working through whatever kinks you might wanna work into that erotic hypnosis. And finally, and of course the most important sometimes, is the emergence out of that scene. That is the final, the tail end of a scene where you come back up, you're able to kind of breathe again. You almost, almost like coming out of the water, you breathe and your brain's lifted. And what happens if that you don't have that emergence? You feel Are really you... weird and out of sorts, kind of. One of the first times I tried it during COVID, I had a test tell me to stare at a spiral that he sent me. Oh my God. But then I did, and I kind of went under, but then I didn't have anyone to bring me out. So, <laughs> I was like, so speaking of an evidence, how do I song, bring... wake me up. I've had a session like that as well. There was one guy during COVID. He was in another part of the world, clearly, because it was like daytime for him, but night time for me and halfway through like the session kind of the induction-y parts he's like and now you're going to be a statue and listen to this beat and they put on like a song and he didn't turn off his microphone and I heard him taking a f like quality check call for his actual job where he's doing like some sort of like helping with a computer problem and in the back of my mind because I'm, I'm, I'm yeah I'm kind of suggestible but I'm also like really oh my god time and place. And that really took me out. I never did any hypno with him ever again, but I did let him know Ye your scene was kind of uh, distracted. <laughs> and finally, are we hypnotizing you? Absolutely not, maybe, probably, but. <laughs> That's not how it works though. It, no. No. What? That, that is where the susceptibility can get really off the charts for some people. There are people that really just can get fully hypnotized and they're fully open because of just how their brain works. So it's not impossible for some people to just be automatically under with the first time, but that's where everyone's brain is a little bit different. And that's why I wanna instill, again, you gotta be really careful with this. You have to trust someone fully and well, we're not putting you under. Sometimes people can be very covert with their stuff. So you gotta be able to, to train that mind. So how do you vet somebody? Pupglade specifically asks just that. And they say, how can one go about vetting and finding hypnotist to even have a scene with? And there were lots of other people just asking about safety. So how do you do that? Well, there are websites like FetLife, kind of like a Facebook for kink, where you can not only talk and interact with people, but on Hypnosis for Guys specifically, they have a place where you can leave reviews of hypnotists. Mm. And yes, some people can be hypnotized to leave a good review on Yelp, but... <laughs> 
More often than not, people within that community are very quickly outed if they do something that's not consensual or a little unsavory. For me, it's usually a red flag sort of situation. Like anything in kink, if someone's giving you a weird red flag, especially with hypnosis, you should trust your gut on that. I've had someone that was like, well, can I take photos or videos? Like I was like, ooh, red flag. Um, no, I'm not really good with that. Maybe we just start with like audio and then like, well, wouldn't it be fun? And I was like, ooh, no, we're not gonna play with this person. You gotta make sure you're treating yourself with the utmost caution because again, this is not just that it's intimate, but this is a very delicate part of your body. You don't want to mess with that. But what if you did want photos and videos? What if it was fun? Fine. That, that's fine. That you are consenting to that. Yeah. With hypno, it's not just consent. It's overt, enthusiastic, I'm good with this, 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 and this. And especially with hypno, there should be an entire session where it's no hypno at all and you're just getting to know the person. So you don't recommend just doing full into it with someone new? Exactly. And even our hypnotist specialist says that you want to have a really in-depth conversation about people's wants and needs as well as who they are. You, you connect with someone a lot better when you can trust them as well. Even people that say like, oh, well you can't hypnotize someone that doesn't want to be hypnotized. Sometimes you can't hypnotize someone like that, even against their will, and that's where you gotta be really careful. Hypnotists, even when they are hypnotizing you, do fall into a trance. I was wondering about that, mm -hmm. because if you're talking in this monotone voice, do they start to like fall under it as well? Yes, hypnotists do experience having a trance as well. And it should be noted that while the hypnotist might be in control in a lot of this, the bottom or the sub in this situation is the one that's hopefully driving those inspirations for the scene. While the tist, the person doing the hypnotize, the tist is a, is a, it's a very technical term. <laughs> it isn't, it's just kind of shortening it. <laughs> tist, 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 don't, don't give me a hard time. <laughs> While the TIST is doing the hypnotizing, they also want feedback and they are exerting energy. So treating that person as just a hypnotist and that's it, it's also kind of dehumanizing in a not nice way. When it comes to bad situations though, if you ever encounter one, which I hope you don't, time and distance really help to lessen the impact of a bad hypno session. I've heard many a horror story where someone was taken advantage of monetarily, oh. physically, imprinted or programmed to do things that they really don't want to do. When you get into that CNC of it all, what you really don't want to do can sometimes be really hot too. That's why vetting is so important. Absolutely. Yeah. And then Rakala asks, all glory to the hypnotoad? All glory to the hypnotoad. God damn it, not this again. The next real question from Divic Pup who asks, what could cause me to wake up suddenly when listening to some sort of hypno track or a hypnotist? Any loud noise. Well, <laughs> <laughs> or let's say the hypnotist going on a, a quality assurance call with their actual boss as they're trying to hypnotize. That, I that thought you were going to say they, they went to the bathroom and took a dump. Oh, <laughs> that's, God. Where, that's, well, that's that, where I thought you were going with that story. I mean, when I was doing stuff on Skype and over the internet, like a bad internet connection can take you out. Yeah. You know, or even a, a trigger word that, that takes you out of the scene, you know. According to our hypno researchers, almost anyone can get hypnotized, but most people still have some kind of red flags or, or things that go off in their mind that'll tell them if they are enjoying it or not. And especially when you talk about hypnotism, like most people are wanting to be degraded, humiliated, or given triggers that are kind of like, oh my God. Oh my God. So there is a way in which you can always like go under, but there are certain things that can take you out still. For me, yeah, loud noises. Someone doing something that I did not consent to does take me out. Have you ever watched Sherlock? Holmes? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> sure. Yes, Holmes. In Sherlock Holmes, he has this thing that he calls like his mind palace, where he, like he goes to think or do things. That might mean something to some people who really enjoy Tumblr. But when I started getting hypnotized, I would always kind of like lock away this part of my brain that was kind of like analyzing what was happening or listening to the hypnotist that was putting me under. It was almost like a fail safe. And while I can't tell you how to do that, it did help me to kind of so take care of myself. So you had a safety compartment and you yeah. had a, the fantasy compartment yeah. and then you had the relaxed compartment. And, and then the flotation department right there the where it brought you back up out of the, the scene if you know. <laughs> Next question, and this one is a real thick one, comes from Flit Rider, who asks, is there specific kinds of styles to hypno that are easier or harder to dig into or to put under rather than the conventional hypno style? And I understand what the question's kind of asking, is like different styles and, and ways in which people go under. And there are entire comprehensive lists of like 30 plus ways you could put someone under from visualization to having them stair step to lying down to shaking their hand and 
they go under. Or the get out uh, spoon tapping. <laughs> back and forth. Sure. Even confusion inductions, which are actually kind of fun, where someone talks about a bunch of different things to really just scatter your mind and confuse you, and then when you're least expecting it, they get you under. Which is what you do to me every show. <laughs> <laughs> that said, there are generally, within all of those different kinds of inductions and styles, there are generally two different camps that people come to hypno from and where they're getting most of their knowledge, whether they know that it was from them or not. They're called the Elman inductions or the Erickson inductions. Elman inductions are usually more formulaic and they go down by steps or there are certain things that are meant to relax you, bring you back up and then back down. They're meant to be nice and kind of soothing and more of a relaxation sort of induction. So what's the Ericksonian? The Ericksonian is for those that are a little bit more difficult. That's me. Yeah, sometimes meant to confuse or be covert. They're meant to be conversational, but always should be consensual, I should say. And those are named after Dave Elman and Milton Erickson, who are said to be the two best hypnotists that have literally written the books, but also they didn't like each other apparently. So is that common with hypnotists? Do they think they're the best oh. hypnotist? And I just think that they had differing styles and they were literally, one was more of a relaxation and just kind of, oh, soothing. And one was confusion to the point where now you're under. And most people will go more for the relaxation to at least start, but even our experts said that the Elman approaches are usually a lot gentler and easier on people. Though for some people, the Ericksonian approach is, is better. I love chaos! Next, if we got some skeptics in the house, comes from Samuel Hill who asks, what would you say to someone who's skeptical, but also a little nervous about trying it? To the nervousness, you got this, it's fun. Just make sure you vet people. As far as skepticism, Daddy, what helped you? Trying it a couple times with a couple different people, and seeing mm. different styles. I've been hypnotized by, I would say, 10 to 15 hypnotists through my life, mm -hmm. and most of them were fun and good, and they did a good job, but weren't the style for me. And I've found a more regular hypnotist that I really get along with, that I connect with, that understands my kinks, but also I know I can trust. Same. I went under once I really trust and connected with the person. The first three were people I was not connected to and I was skeptical. Skepticism in this is not bad. I will let you know though, yes, hypnotism works. It's fun, it's exciting, it can be really good. Don't let the skepticism stop you from doing it. And a good hypnotist isn't going to be offended that you're skeptical. Yeah, a good hypnotist wants you to ask those really hard questions and wants you to really challenge them on if they're good or not. And this one was actually a really good question because it wasn't so much about the practices or the feeling, and I do love that a lot of these questions are asking about how this feels, not just the, the steps on how to do it, which is a lot of our kink talk. But this one asks, why is the word hypnosis and hypno in the erotic sense banned on many sites like Pornhub, Patreon, and even PayPal? This is right in our wheelhouse. So when it comes to consent, this almost assumed covert consent happening with Hypno by right. all these platforms. And if the platform cannot prove that someone is fully consenting to, let's say, listening to a Hypno file someone's recorded, or even jerking off to Hypno pornography, it's hard to know what's been fully consented on or what's been done beforehand and then now there's triggers. And a lot of these sites don't even want to deal with that gray area. No, they, they don't want to take the risk uh, because also, as you explained, there are bad hypnotists out there that will take advantage. So yeah. how is a platform supposed to decide which is good and which is bad? But it was actually back in 2019 when Patreon specifically went after hypno-specific content creators. Again, because they were putting this sexual connotation, they were assuming the sexual intent, even of the relaxation or the sleepy files or the files that like turned you into a sex dog where you were like, you know, pretending to be a dog. And they saw that as not consensual. So mm. PayPal started cracking down as well. We all love PayPal and how sex negative they are. Even Pornhub started taking down some erotic video files because it, it had a sense a sense of unconsensual acts. OnlyFans has taken down all of mine as well. OnlyFans and other websites don't let you even use the word hypno. It's a banned term. Right. But you can do like mesmerization or mesmer, call back to mesmer. <laughs> or even meditation in some of the file names, but I understand why they do it, I don't always agree. And that's where you get into that gray area of consent and how it's very complicated. I mean, we don't, look, our politicians don't even understand consent. Like, and now you're asking Patreon and PayPal to dictate what consent is. And Buzzfeed even did an article on something called the Bambi Files, which is this huge, like, catalog of bimboification files that people were listening to, to the point where it was altering their psyche in a bad way. Like, it was making it so they were- Because somebody killed Bambi's mother? But. 
They were just called the Bambi Files. Oh. <laughs> so Bambi had nothing to do with it. <laughs> oh dear. And mentioning the Bambi Files leads into this next question from Pup Saber, who asks, how effective are those YouTube hypno videos? Is in-person hypno better or more effective? First part of that, hypno files or audio files or YouTube videos or Pornhub videos, they can be very effective. Your brain's a muscle. If you keep working that muscle out, it's going to continue to program or reprogram or brainwash, hopefully with consent, you into liking this thing or getting into this headspace. I don't do files that much, so I'm not a good uh, source for this, but I have watched a couple of them, and if they have imagery that turns me on, uh, I can get into it. I prefer an in-person hypnotist because it's very tailored for you specifically. But again, with files, there can be covert or mention things that you did not consent to in some of those files, and now you're going to email me a picture of you naked and, and uh... horny. And while that's fun and sexy, that's what you want to do. Sometimes they add those covert things in those files. I don't like that. So I like real people. Mm. Doesn't need to be in person all the time, but having someone that can navigate that, that hypno realm, but make a tailored experience to you that you can enjoy, but that they also get to get some feedback on and you are both enjoying it and creating a scene together is so much more wholesome and so much more sexy. Mm. And that's why I think it's important again to mention those Bambi files because those were files that the larger community does say can work to turn into like this bimbo doll out person, but also believe that it's very dangerous because it leads to these altered states. Our experts do recommend if you're looking at files online to listen to them in a very sober environment um, with another person if you want, but to just listen to the file with no sexual connotations or undertones whatsoever. And if you still find yourself going under, stop listening. If you can find something to get you into a good headspace though, it's a nice way to practice and flex that muscle. Ninja is also a really great website. Ninja. Not the teenage ninjas? Yeah, not the teenage ninja Mut mutant, mutant ninja hypnotist. Turtle. No, not them. Nimja, it's a site that you can create little spirals and subliminals that you can look at, but you can put your own words in there and your own visuals that lead to kind of like some psychedelic, you know, visuals on your screen. Oh, that's kind of cool. Nimja, it sounds like the Lion King. Nimja. <laughs> I love chaos! <laughs> Next question <laughs> from Terrible Lotus asks, essentially, are there any sorts of professional world certifications or trainings that you need to be a hypnotist? Or is this just a non-issue? Ooh, is it certified? I said certified free. Well, there are like groups of hypnotists that have created certifications that you can take for classes. Our experts are saying that you don't need those. And there are plenty of books and resources you can read to learn to ethically hypnotize people. But wouldn't it be better if you're trying to vet a hypnotist, if there was a standard to go by? Oh, I know many hypnotists who went to Harvard who had actual teachers who did hypno-specific therapy classes. And hypnotherapy is a, a thing that you can be licensed in as a therapist and it is shown to work and help people with their problems or getting over vices maybe they don't want to do but or even smoking. Yeah, smoking, working out better. But I also would just prefer like a, a dumb hypno video that turns you into a hypno that wants to go to the gym. Like that's more fun in my opinion. Hello? There's no certs that you need, but our experts do say that going under and being hypnotized is some of the best ways you can learn different practices or ways that might be good for you or for other people. What a lot of people will do is they'll get hypnotized, grasp onto tiny little bits and pieces of an induction or how someone goes under and flip it into their own style. It's like doms having yeah. a different way that they do it. Uh, but they're still putting you under and they're making you feel like it's up. Yeah, and they're literally customizing the scene for not only that person's kinks that they want worked in, but how you two might work together or three or four, you can hypnotize multiple people. So if you wanted to start out as a hypnotist, what are the first steps you would do to learn? Our experts say that Zach Pinsnaps on YouTube does a lot of really great stage hypno that you can look at and watch and there are some uh, lessons here or there. I would say that you should try to get hypnotized. Learn to find that headspace and that meditative space in your mind where you're, you're feeling like you're going under. <laughs> Maybe read a book or two. There are plenty of resources out there to read as well. So this is actually one of those situations where being a sub first will help you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very much so. Because it's not just a matter of spanking and hitting or flogging where you can see things and you can kind of see how that style works. If you don't know how this headspace feels, it can be really hard to, to literally navigate someone into it. You do have to be very creative. And they say that more creative minds are easier to hypnotize, but also have the more vivid experiences. Um, because it's it's literally like a creative process. Hmm. 
that makes sense. And last but not least, the question by Empty Trance asks, do you feel like Hypno is having a moment lately in terms of visibility and interest? I think so. I mean, we're doing a video about it. So. Well, no, but I see a lot more of it. It's, it's yeah. kind of like the growth of the himbo movement. Just I did a video the, about that too. The mm -hmm. objectification and stuff. I'm seeing a lot more hypno in my feeds. I get so many questions from people whenever we talk about or even mention hypno. Mm -hmm. There's so much interest there because people are titillated by things they don't quite understand. I don't So many people want to know more. Mm -hmm. They want to know how it feels. Mm -hmm. They want to know how the process works. Yeah, when I put up a scene on my fan sites, uh, my Twitter blew up with people asking questions about it. And that happens whenever we do cover a more taboo or varsity level or extreme kink. And that's what this is. It is a very extreme and varsity level kink. This is your brain. Again, if we're not yelling and snapping our fingers enough, like treat this with caution, please but enjoy it. So yeah, I think Hypno's having a bit of a moment, but I'm glad to see it because it's something that really helped me to work out stress and to relieve, you know, just the ah that happens up there every once in a while. Every once in a while. And <laughs> I think it's good that we're talking about it because it's getting people to part of that conversation. People are able to ask questions, we're able to talk about it, and not only caution, but provide safer ways in which you can get into this kink. And even though I'm not gung-ho about it, I do like having it in my repertoire. I'm just a normal ho, thank you. And I've also learned from hypnosis with the tips that worked on me that I can do a soothing daddy voice when I'm doming can that you? puts, yes. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> and whether it's a trigger or a safe word, always have something that helps you get out of a scene. And today's safe word is... Kaka! Regardless, please leave a comment down below if you have any other questions about hypnotism. And if you like ringing bells, do that a little bit more Bing, so you bong, see it go bing, back and bong. forth and back. And if you'd like to see more topics from us, don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you all next time. Bye! Subscribe. And check out how you sleep. <laughs> and check out how you sleep. That's pulling me out of my dom space. <laughs> You're getting very sleepy. You're the worst hypnotist. <laughs>